Hey hippies, welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's your girl Courtney Shavante. I'm back with another bougie hippie tutorial. This one's gonna be for a mini rolling tray. It is absolutely beautiful. We have a lot of stuff going on here. So if you wanna see how to make this, make sure you stay tuned and hit that subscribe button for me. All right, so to start off, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a little lighting pad. This is going to help make it a lot easier for us to trace. You may see this on Amazon labeled as a tracing board, but I'll try to leak one below for you. But basically what I did was I just went ahead and took the design that I pre-printed. I pre-printed a lot of different sizes because I wasn't sure exactly what size I was going to want to use. I placed that paper on top of the lighting pad and from here it's um, going to make it easy for me to see the design through the mold which I placed on top of the paper as you see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I have it straight and everything, make sure it's exactly where I want it. And then once it's where I want it, I'm going to use this double sided tape just to help secure this in place while I am drawing this design directly onto the mold. So yeah, this is going to be really fun and everything. This is going to be the first time I've ever like really hand painted anything like this exactly um, right onto the mold. So. I did a little experiment and everything it turned out great so I'm gonna show you guys like kind of how I did it and everything but um, yeah I'm just going to be preparing like my supplies first I'll be wiping down the tray mold because you want to make sure that the surface is absolutely clean I'm using alcohol and a little paper towel I'm not worried about scratching this mold surface just because it's kind of old anyway and I'm going to be doming this as well so it's not so big of a deal but if you want to be careful of that, I suggest using like a microfiber rag or something like that. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Pabeo outliner. I'm using the silver color in this particular tutorial. Um, but any of the colors will work. Just use what you prefer. I'm finding a nice little starting point, trying to get everything comfortable and everything. And then I'm just going to start slowly squeezing the paint out from the nozzle directly where the lines are starting I'm gonna find a nice starter line and then just go from there and use that line as your anchor for the rest of the design all right now i do suggest making sure that you don't apply too much pressure or anything like that as you are um, pressing the paint out of that bottle just because you don't want it to bubble up and you know just mess up the design and everything so just be mindful of that as you are drawing now i am going to go ahead and let you guys watch this portion of it and everything so you guys can just kind of see how i am drawing this design on here because it's pretty self-explanatory from here and then we're going to let this dry completely and i will catch you guys on the next step
All right, hippies, so now it's time for the fun part. Once that's completely dry and everything, what you're going to do is you're going to take your mica powders and go ahead and separate them into little cups and everything so that way they're already pre-portioned and you're not rushing around and everything with the gloves on because you know when you get the gloves on and stuff it it can get really hard trying to manage with these little bags and these little sticks and everything anyways yeah just go ahead and separate all of that you're also going to want to do one for your glitter mix now your glitter mix, um, you do want to um, choose one that goes with the design because we'll be using this glitter mix um, throughout the entire project. So make sure you do have enough of it as well. But you see me just adding like about a scoop and a half of um, the glitter into the little cup. I also have the bright tone, which I showed you guys a little bit earlier, um, which is just a polyurethane. You can also use the varnish as well. Um, I believe Deco Art um, makes a really good varnish. I'll be making a video soon showing how I do that and everything um, using that because I haven't showed that on here. But um, what you're going to do is you're just going to take that polyurethane and you're going to add a couple drops into the mica powder. Just start off with a couple drops, um, maybe about three or four, and then just mix it up really well. And then add in as you need it because you do want the paste to be rather thick because you want more of the mica powder. Um, you kind of just want to make a nice little paste with this and everything. As you can see, as I'm painting onto the mold, I didn't take into um, consideration that it's not going to, you know, just stay spread evenly across the silicone and everything. So what I'm doing is I'm adding in a little bit of glitter just to make it heavier, um, which wasn't really necessary, but I did do it just to make my life easier. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to fill up each of these little cavities um, where we did the outline of the lotus flower. So since we are going to be having to fill these up, we don't want the colors to mix and merge into each other. So we're going to um, work with one to two colors at a time. So um, what you see me doing here is I'm just kind of filling in the little leaf portions um, of the mold. And then I'm um, going to, um, not, not the mold, um, it's on the mold, but of that, just like where that little pebble outliner is, I'm filling in the leaves and everything, and I'm turning them green essentially. So, yeah, just go ahead and mix it up. Try to get all the bubbles out the best you can, and be patient. Um, this is sped up, um, I believe, four times. So, keep that in mind. I am moving, you know, a lot slower than what it looks like I am moving on here. But you just want to slowly use that paintbrush to build on top and make sure that, you know, you actually fill that cavity so that way when it dries, it dries in place. And you will see on the next step um, kind of what I mean regarding that. Okay, hippies, so now we're going to do the same exact thing with the glitter. So with this glitter one, I went ahead and mixed it up, made sure it's a nice little paste with that glitter mix. And I'm going to fill in the areas where I want my glitter mix to be the same exact way I did with the mica powder and the polyurethane mix. You're going to do the same thing with the glitter. So just go ahead and fill that on in. This one's a bit easier to fill in. The chunky glitter is always the easiest one to fill in. So if you want to use just glitters instead of the mica powders, you do have that option as well if you want to make your life a little bit easier. But yeah, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the time lapse and I will catch you on the next step.
all right so you have taken the time to let that completely dry and everything um even if it's not completely dry it should be dry to touch and nothing should be moving and everything you want to go ahead and move on to your next color so the next color that i'm going to be using here i'm going to be using a purple mica powder um i went ahead and added that polyurethane in and then from here i'm just going to go ahead and start filling in my spaces with that purple this purple is such a pretty color i love how this purple looks it's so deep and beautiful but yeah i'm just going to go ahead and continue doing this and i'm going to do it with this color and then you're going to see me do it with the white in the next color on the next um with the next color on the next step and everything um so i'll let you guys go ahead and continue to see how i fill this in and then i will catch you once all this filled in once all this is filled in and completely dry
all right hippie so that should have had a chance to dry what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and prep about 15 milliliters of resin you're going to pour that right into the rim of this tray mold um, you want to stir a stick around as well make sure it's bubble free you don't have any trapped bubbles in there or anything like that then i'm grabbing these little unicorn charms that i have in my shop um, they are sold out right now but they will be coming back so keep an eye out i'm just placing these into my mold into the rim into the resin making sure they're face down um, and submerged completely into the resin so that way they do what i need them to do be mindful of any bubbles that may get trapped um, and you can use some curved um, tweezers to help make that a little bit easier to place in there if you need to get in there with a toothpick to pop any bubbles feel free to do that as well because we have a few more things that are going to be going into that rim all right next you want to go ahead and add some amethyst chips i'm not going to be adding a whole lot there will be 12 in total um, i'm just adding three in each corner of the tray um so that will if you want to call it a corner anyway circle oval whatever you want to call it anyway um i'm just adding three chips of amethyst on each little faux corner corner wannabe and then i'm placing those um twisting them around and manipulating them with the resin so i can make sure it's completely submerged and there aren't any air bubbles trapped then I'm going to do the same thing with that glitter mix. I'm just going to spoon it over where the amethyst chips are. So it kind of peeks through where those amethyst stones are and everything. And just adds a little bit more dimension to the rim. It makes it a bit more interesting. Don't be afraid to grab that toothpick again as well. Just to get in there and make sure that you have all the, bubble, all the bubbles popped into the surface. So that way it doesn't disrupt the design. Uh, from here you're going to go ahead and let this cure. After that first layer has had a chance to cure, you're going to go ahead and whip up a little bit more resin. I made 20 milliliters, but you really only need maybe about 10 to 15 for this step or so. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and color this resin white using mica powder, mixing that up really, really well, um, making sure that I don't have any chunks or anything like that. And then from there, I'm going to take this white alcohol ink by Pixis. I'm going to add a few, a few drops on in there. That's also going to help make sure that it bursts any bubbles that may be trapped because alcohol will always um, help those bubbles pop and rise to the surface. So it's sort of like a two-in-one. Um, but yeah, so you're going to take your purple alcohol ink after you've gotten that mixed up. You're going to add one drop um, on each unicorn and you just want to be very light-handed. You don't want a whole lot. It's okay if it leaks a little bit because we're going for a particular look. Now take your resin and you want to aim at the stones first and then start um, adding the resin into that rim. Be careful not to flood it onto the base, um, but you kind of want the resin to meet where the purple alcohol ink is so it pushes it um, towards the center or towards where the unicorn is instead of away, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's what you're just going to do um, after you finish adding in and making sure that rim is filled and all the bubbles are popped. You're going to allow that time to cure my hippies.
Okay, so now we need to go ahead and move to a more even surface and everything because we're going to be working with alcohol inks and stuff on this step. So first you want to start by cleaning the surface of the mold, making sure there aren't any excess pieces or pigments or anything that might have gotten trapped or, you know, just kind of flew over there while you were working and stuff. Um, you're going to prep 80 milliliters of resin and that's what we're going to work with in this particular layer. Grab the glitter mix that we had worked with previously and then you're going to just sprinkle the glitter onto the side edges. Um, it's okay that there isn't any resin in here yet. It's going to pick it up and everything and then it being directly on the silicone is going to help make sure that it kind of stays in the area that we want it to stay in. So pro tip. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the resin into the mold um, to go ahead and make an even layer here. First you're going to start by adding it onto the lotus just to make sure that you know no air bubbles get trapped and then from there you're just going to go ahead and pour that entire 80 milliliters right on into the mold. So go ahead and fill that on up, um, no resin left behind, make sure you scrape the sides and everything so that way you can get that on in there. And then um, once you're finished with that, you're going to take a toothpick and then you're just going to use that toothpick to kind of drag the glitter around. You want to pull it a bit towards the lotus so that way it just kind of creates the effect that we want and it's not all cramped in that corner. So just have some fun with it, use your judgment and everything and just push it around. Now, if you're really enjoying these glitter mixes, make sure you do check out my Etsy shop and everything or the website uh, when it launches. Um, so that way you can get your own glitter mixes. I hand mix them and I come up with all the different colorways on my own. And I'm pretty sure you guys will love them. I get a lot of great feedback regarding them. So make sure you check out that Etsy shop so that way you can make your project sparkle just like mine. All right, so after you have all your glitter arranged and you made sure that you know your tray is in a nice level area, what you're going to do is you're going to start with this purple alcohol ink and you're just going to drop a little on each side. I added maybe about four drops on each side. And then I'm going to take my white alcohol ink and then I'm going to drop that white alcohol ink right on top of that purple. I'm doing about three drops on each side. From here, you can just go ahead and take your toothpick and swirl it around a bit just to make it more interesting, add some dimension and whatnot. And this is going to, you know, just kind of add to the multi-layeredness of this piece. And that's what I really loved about it. I love how it has just so many different layers and that makes it so interesting and everything. Don't be afraid to get in there with a little bit more alcohol ink if you do need to. Um, you just don't want to oversaturate it to where it starts to meet in the middle too much. So you do want it to stay over to the sides because we're going to be coming in with another layer um, on the next step. So go ahead and let that cure once you finish manipulating it and they'll be ready for a next step. All right, so what we're going to do for this step, you're going to prep 60 milliliters of resin and then you're also going to get some iridescent um, film. I cut this to shape um, off camera and everything. I just use the mold to kind of trim around it and whatnot. It doesn't have to be perfect. I crumbled it up um, to kind of prep it and then I'm adding a little bit of resin. Um, not a lot, maybe 20 milliliters if that. And I'm just adding that to um, this little surface and everything where the resin is and I'm using my popsicle stick to push that around evenly. You're also going to want to get in here with a heat gun and then just kind of thin this layer out a bit so that way we can make sure that it's nice and even and that any bubbles that get trapped um, aren't in the way or anything like that since we are going to be putting that film right on top of this. So that's the next step. Put that on top. Um, use your popsicle stick. Start on one side and then push it down and go over. You can use a silicone brush, which I personally love. This one's like a little spatula shaped one and it um, really helps with things like this. Um, with this, you're going to push this iridescent film as close to that um, hardened resin surface 
as you can um, you're going to push out all the excess resin all the excess bubbles everything that you don't need underneath there you're going to push it out and then what you do push out you want to kind of scoop it out and put it back into the cup where the remaining resin is and everything from the um, 60 milliliters that we had pre-mixed well that I had pre-mixed <laughs> off camera um, but yeah, so just go ahead and scoop that out and everything because you don't want a bunch of clear resin interfering with this next step. Now take that resin that's in that measuring cup, go ahead and color it white using a little bit of mica powder. Um, you see me mixing that in off to the side and everything. And then I'm going to add some drops of the alcohol ink. And I'm going to make sure it's a nice deep opaque white. So it's nice and beautiful and does exactly what I need it to do. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pour that directly into my mold. And this is going to be my base. Now go ahead and take your popsicle stick to kind of manipulate that because like I said, you want to kind of minimize the amount of clear space. So all that clear space to where the, rose, um, <laughs> where the resin flow to the edges, you wanna go ahead and mix that in and then swirl it around and let it be so it can cure. mini reveal time so what we want to do first is you want to go ahead and pull at the edges so we can go ahead and wiggle this tray right from this mold so make sure you do loosen the edges first and it should pop right on out for you um, after you get it popped out you want to just go ahead and take those excess pieces off the sides and everything and you can sand it down if you need to as well all right so what we're going to do is we're going to first prep 20 milliliters of resin here um, i'm going to go ahead and just dome this layer here because i want to make sure that this top is nice shiny and even especially since we did our decorations directly onto the mold so this is just going to seal everything in and make it beautiful Mwah. Chabala. But yeah, <laughs> so you're just going to go ahead and spread that on around. Use the stick. Um, don't be shy. Go ahead and add more resin in there if you need to because 20 milliliters will not fill this tray and it's not going to make it usable or anything like that. And you want to make sure that there aren't any dips. I didn't use the full 20 and I had a dips, had dips in it. Um, and you might see it in the show off video, but you're not going to see it now because it's going to look even right now. But yeah, that's why I say to go ahead and use all the resin that you actually need to. Don't hold back. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and use your heat gun to thin that out and everything. That's going to help pop the bubbles. And it's going to help bring them to the top so they can pop at the surface as it sits. And then once you finish getting it even, you can spray your alcohol spray and then just allow that to cure. Ta-da, hippies! Isn't she absolutely beautiful? I am so in love with this tray, personally. I love everything that it has going on here. I love how these unicorns look just kind of, you know, circling around the lotus pond. I love the amethyst sitting in there with the glitter. I just really love how that iridescent film peeks behind. I love how it looks um, in the clear part. I love how it looks behind the alcohol ink. It's just so beautiful. And look at that lotus. Like, like, I know I'm not much of a hand painter and everything, but this tracing method really, really helps. It turned out beautifully because like, look at that, look at that, look at that. It makes me look almost like a professional. <laughs> but yeah this is how it looks on the side look at these alcohol inks as well hippies like let's get into these alcohol inks and these glitters you see how they just kind of swirl there imagine just being high as hell staring at this tray like don't you want that experience for your customers I know I do so <laughs> if you do like this tutorial and everything make sure you comment below if you try it out make sure you do tag me on social media and everything I'll leave your reviews on my Etsy shop I love hearing from you guys and it just makes me feel so special until next time hippies xo Mwah. bye now